Hey everyone, and thanks for jumping back into the Cryptoverse. Today, we're gonna to talk about Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics, part 19. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up, and also check out the Telegram channel, which you can find a link to in the description below. Let's go ahead and jump in. So we do this series on the first of every month, and we've been doing it, of course, for at least 19 months. Now, we actually started the series a little bit before that, but I, I think it was about 19 months ago when we first started calling it Bitcoin, the beauty of mathematics. And the reason we like to talk about Bitcoin and, and mathematics together is the idea that, you know, there's a lot of things in nature that we can describe by mathematics. And as humans, we are part of nature. Uh, and can we describe how how humans may may operate under under these market conditions? OK, and, and just to try to figure out what is the more likely path to to the cryptocurrency asset class going to a very modest 10 trillion dollars. All right. So what we want to do is we want to first look at the total cryptocurrency market capitalization. Now, as always, I understand that the title of the video says Bitcoin, but it is, in fact, the total cryptocurrency market capitalization. And as of January 1st of 2022, the total crypto market cap is coming in at a very modest 2.22 trillion with the fair value logarithmic regression trend line, which, as we know, is a monotonically increasing function, coming in at a more humble 1.22 trillion, which does represent a slight overvaluation of 82%. However, I would expect the peak overvaluation at a market cycle peak to be much higher than that. So what you'll notice, there's three lines on this curve. Also note that this is a logarithmic scale. So each major tick is 10x. So 10 million to 100 million, 1 billion, 10 billion, 100 billion. We started this market cycle off at around a $100 billion market capitalization. Okay, now for reference, we started the prior market cycle off, uh, you know, somewhere between 1 to 10 billion. Okay, and we, then we finished it at almost a trillion, almost. So in this instance, we actually went over 100x during the last cycle because we started well below 10 billion and then we went up to about 800 billion. I think it was 840, 820, 800 and something billion for the entire asset class. And so the theory here is that, well, perhaps we can make it to 10 trillion, but what we've said all along in this series, going all the way back to 2019, is that, you know, if the asset class is going to make it to $10 trillion, it's highly likely not going to do so in 2021. One of the reasons is because we've observed before that the, the cycles just fundamentally lengthen. This is not, you know, this is honestly, it's not even that novel of a concept. I mean, in, in all sorts of asset classes, you'll, you'll observe that, that cycles generally lengthen. It's the sign of a maturing asset class. And, and I also think it makes sense from a fundamental perspective that you're just going to have a lot more people coming in, a lot more money, but it's also going to take a lot more time to move the asset class just because the market capitalization is getting higher. What we notice, though, is we can visualize this a lot better by just drawing trend lines from the bottom to a theoretical top. OK, so this was the first cycle. This was the second cycle. And this was the third cycle. And then this, of course, is the fourth cycle. And we're just projecting out a line that goes from the bottom through the midpoint, what we at least hope is the midpoint, as we've noted over here in 2013. Now, remember, one of the things we've been saying all along is that this cycle will be different than every other cycle. OK, a lot of people and I don't I don't know why, but but so many people, you know, line things up to a previous cycle and say that it has to play out exactly the same way. But there really is no evidence to suggest that if you took cycle three, and assumed it had to play out the exact same way as cycle two, then you would have been expecting another double peak and it never would have come. If you thought cycle two had to play out the same way as cycle one, then you may have thought this first peak was it and then maybe you sold everything and then you missed out on the second run. So to assume that any previous cycle has to be a carbon copy of a future cycle is, is dubious at best, right? Dubious at best. And so it's more interesting, in my opinion, to look at trends in the asset class, to look at what is it trending towards, not to, not to assume that it has to play out the same way, but what is the overall mathematical trend that we see? Now, one of the things we can speculate on is that, well, 
if we were to reach another market cycle peak, assuming that 69K was not the market cycle top for Bitcoin back in November of 2021, assuming that, then we could project the market cycle peak is going to be well out into 2022. All right, I've said all along, lengthening cycles, one of the common misconceptions about lengthening cycles is that, oh, well, you know, if it goes into January, it, then we have lengthening cycles. Well, technically, that would be correct, right? I mean, a market cycle peak in January of 2022 would, in fact, be a lengthened cycle. However, we could not ignore the margin of error on a theoretical four-year cycle. And you could say, well, if it's plus or minus one or two months, is anyone going to really care if, if a cycle peak is in January of 2022 as opposed to December of 2021? I think if, if, if there is a market cycle peak in January of 2022, you could basically just say it was a four-year cycle if then we go back down and then we just keep renting and repeating the same thing, plus or minus one or two months, okay? So the whole idea behind a lengthened cycle is not that, that it would just have a market cycle peak one or two months later, but in fact, it could be six months later or 12 months later or even longer. Did you know that the, the difference between the cycle one and cycle two was like a year and a half longer? Cycle two was about a year and a half longer than cycle one. Cycle three was about a year longer than cycle two. So to just assume that it's only going to increase by one or two months is actually not really following the trend. Now, again, there is limited evidence, right? And that's why we say it is dubious speculation at best. It's not like we know for a fact every cycle is going to lengthen. No one knows what is going to happen, despite how confident people may seem. But I'm just going with what the data says. And to me, the data suggests that the market cycle is lengthened. Okay, that's what it suggests to me. And that's what I think is going to happen. All right. So again, this is not financial advice. So one of the things we can do, and I should stress that this is about as dubious analysis as you can get. And the reason is because measuring angles depends on the aspect ratio. But I always see people in the comments say, well, can you look at the angles? You know, you draw these lines, right? We always draw these lines. Can you look at the angles? And my response is, well, look, the angles depend on the aspect ratio. If I were to shrink the chart, like if I were to make the x-axis different dimensions or, or make the y-axis, you know, if I were to change the aspect ratio, then it's going to completely change the trend angles. And therefore, the mathematical properties that you might get from those uh, could also change. So using angles is not really the best way to, to look at the market. So let me just say that for sure. It's not the best way. But if we did, right, if we did dubiously speculate on trend angles, on this chart, what might it suggest? That's the thing, okay. So what we notice is that this first angle, if you take it from the bottom to the top, is about 66 degrees. The second one was about 44 degrees. The third one was 28 degrees. Now, if we measure from bottom, and then we just draw a line through the prior mark, through the prior local top of, 20, of, of 2021, a theoretical local top like we could have done in 2013, that angle is around 20 degrees. And then it would have put the, it would put a market cycle peak well out into 2022. Now, what if we were to look at some mathematical properties of, of these angles? Again, remembering that it depends on the aspect ratio, this is about 0.66. So 66 degrees, 44 degrees, about 0.66 multiple this is from 44 to 28 it's about 0.64 if we were to assume this is 0.62 which i don't know why we would i'm just speculating here then i would, it would actually put this next one as opposed to 20 degrees it would actually put it at 17 degrees and then you could argue that this first one sort of overshot it just like 2013 overshot that one a little bit and then it could actually put the market cycle peak out into 2023 and if you guys know i've i've said for years now that there is no reason the cycle has to end in 2021 just because the last cycle ended in 2017. Remember, there is a lot of recency bias, in my opinion, associated with the idea that the cycle has to go from, you know, to a market cycle peak by December of 2021. What we do know, you know, we, we sort of watched the cycle in 2021 play out. What we said back in May is that we don't, I don't believe that 64K is the top, but if it were the top, then we would have experienced diminishing returns and a shortening cycle. But I didn't think 64K was the top. And then in November, we had 69K, okay? And, and, and people saying that it's a double top. Now, I don't think 69K is the top to the market cycle, but if it were, then it would actually mean we have diminishing returns and you could make the case that it is in fact a four-year cycle, right? You could make the case and that it just came you know, it came about when it should have, about a month before when a lot of people might might have thought it would, 
Which even then, there's really no reason to think it couldn't happen in November, considering that in 2013 it happened in November. The market cycle peak was in November. But that it came in at prices well below what, what a lot of people thought. Because again, a lot of people, what I find is a lot of people that, that talk about the four-year cycle, they also think that diminishing returns uh, isn't really a thing either, which I don't really understand. And they say it's going to go to 300K and, and, and stuff like that. But look, I do think Bitcoin will make it to 300K. I just think it's going to take a lot longer than 2021 to get there. Right? That's the point. It's not that it won't make it there. I, I wholeheartedly believe that it will. It's just that it's not likely going to make it there. Well, now it's obviously not going to make it there in 2021, considering it's not 2022, unless we go through the black hole and go back in time or something. But um, yeah, it's probably not going to make it to 3 k in 2021 is what we always said, right? Is what we always said. I would also say it's probably not going to make it to 300 k in 2022. One of the things we noted before is that Bitcoin is highly unlikely to make it to 100 k in 2021. Now that we're in 2022... I would say it's more probable. Okay, so if you follow this channel since 2019 when I started it, I've always maintained that it's highly unlikely that Bitcoin goes to 100K in 2021, but that 2022 is a is a more probable possibility. And if it doesn't happen in 2022, I I, I think it would it would very very likely happen in 2023. Okay, so as we go into 2022, just know that in my opinion, there is now a reasonable chance that Bitcoin makes it to 100K. Though I did not think there was a great chance it would make it to 100K in 2021. It did seem like it could do it back in, in April, but even back then we said, look, we're probably gonna get a three to six month summer lull, okay? Drop in the market, all right? So that would put it out in, in 2023 if we, if we speculated on trend angles, something like that. So, and then, and then also looking at these sort of intermediate peaks. Also, do not discount the potential for a different type of cycle, not a double peak cycle, could be a triple peak cycle. Maybe the first part of the cycle is like 20, 2013, the second part of the cycle could be like 2017 for all we know. We just simply do not know. And I think the idea that anyone does know is ignorant, okay? And that, in, that goes for me too. You know, I don't know exactly what's going to happen in this market. And if anything, 2021 should have showed you that most everyone else, or everyone basically, does not know what is going to happen. Think about every person who was calling for a major blow off top in Q4 2021, where we went to like 100K, 200K, 300K. That didn't happen. Okay, that didn't happen. And it's very likely, un it's very unlikely to happen in January either. So do understand that, you know, all of these models, including my own, including my own, to some degree are wrong, right? All models are wrong, some are useful. So I would say that if you have an issue with a certain model, then just use a different one, right? You don't have to use that model, you can use a different one. I also see people giving other people a hard time, um, uh, you know, saying that, that lengthening cycles isn't going to play out because of whatever reason, or they say that the stock to flow model um, is, is completely wrecked for whatever reason, look, First of all, I should say that if you're gonna criticize a model, maybe you should create your own before, before criticizing one. Um, but also I think a lot of people actually fundamentally misunderstand the stock to flow model and that it's actually based on averages and not market cycle peaks, okay? So again, I do think that the stock to flow model is a little bit more ambitious than, than um, what I would think would happen. Like, I don't think that Bitcoin's average price can go to like 288,000 this cycle for the stock to flow cross asset model, which would mean like it would have to go to 500K to get the average price to 288K and it would have to stay at those levels for a long time. I don't think that's going to happen. Okay. But it doesn't mean that the stock to flow model can't still somehow pan out if we do have a parabolic rally and then we get that average price up a lot higher. So I think there's a lot of misunderstanding. Um, you know, with a lot of these models. And do remember that they're just models, okay? They're all wrong. Some of them are useful. Hopefully the ones we present on this channel are at least somewhat useful to you. Continuing on, we go back to this chart. We note that we have our market cap in the white line. The fair value is the red line. What if we take the percent difference between the white line and the red line, shift it by 100% to calculate or to, to show the undervaluation? You get a chart like this. You note that there's prior market cycle tops denoted in the in the red um, in the red circles 
And then we've also noted before the similarities between this cycle and the cycle from 2013. Now, that's not to say that it's going to continue to emulate it, right? I mean, there's a good chance that it won't. But what we have noted is that there are similarities between them, except that this cycle, at the very least, is a stretched out version of 2013. And now I see a lot more people uh, catching on to that idea, which is great. Um, but, it, but I mean, if you look at what happened in 2019, a lot of people who watched this channel were around back in 2019 in the asset class, and we saw this run. It was very similar to what happened back over here in, in the, you know, the 2011 into 2011, early 2012 phase. It was just this one was more drawn out. And so shouldn't we then expect that this entire cycle would be more drawn out? In the same manner, the first local top potentially over here came back down to the same undervaluation more or less that 2013 came to, and then it came back, up, came back up again. A lot of people thought it was just gonna go straight up, but we said, look, everything else has taken longer. Why not assume that this is going to also take longer, okay? That's the argument anyways. Now, we could go on a completely different path. I'm not saying we can't, but so far, the idea of a stretch out version of 2013 still seems like it's a high likelihood. Like there's, a, there's at least a decent, maybe I shouldn't say high likelihood, but there is a decent probability that that plays out. I would be, I would say that's more likely to play out or just as likely to play out than basically anything else. Um, so we'll see what happens, okay? The other thing we've looked at is the valuation uh, time frame to go from market cycle peak here to intermediate peak, 672 days from intermediate peak to new market cycle top, 235. This cycle from, from this peak here to, to the intermediate peak, potential theoretical intermediate peak. Of course, it was an intermediate peak by absolute values of the all-time high because Bitcoin went to 69K, it took 1,211 days. But the issue is that we actually were at lower levels of overvaluation. So think about that for a second. Despite the fact that Bitcoin went to 69K and the entire asset class went higher, the overvaluation was actually not quite as much. You might say, well, how has that been? I mean, like it doesn't really make sense that it wouldn't be as high. You have to remember that the logarithmic regression trend line is a monotonically increasing function, so it only ever goes up. So over here, the fair value was, let's say, 800 billion, but today the fair value is 1.22 trillion. So we're, we're shifting what our reference point is, and that's why our overvaluation back in November wasn't quite as high as it was in April and May, because the fair value was a lot higher, okay? If you, were to, if you were to speculate on that and take time ratios, it would actually put the next market cycle peak out in July of 2022. Now, if you were to take this chart, which I've shown before, and I'll, I'll continue to show it, it shows days versus peak one, peak two, and peak three, okay? And what you notice is if you do an Arrhenius plot and take inverse time, so we're taking days and dividing, we get one over days, so one over time, you get this, and then you fit that to a function, what do you note? Where would it put the fourth market cycle top? Again, I know it sounds crazy, and you know people people have given. <laughs> I've shown this chart, by the way, since 2019. Okay, but people have, have have sort of criticized the idea, and we'll see what happens. But if you had to guess, where would it put cycle four's peak? August of 2023, in fact. If you did this type of of extrapolation, again, extrapolating from three data points on this kind of a plot is ridiculous okay i know that and in fact if you took to give you an idea of the sensitivity if bitcoin's market cycle top in 2017 had occurred in say i don't i don't remember what it was like let's say it occurred a few months before when it did in december of instead of december 2017 let's say it occurred in like september or something or october then it would have then shifted the prediction for the cycle four peak to actually be in 2022 okay so you can see how sensitive it is so I, I don't, I'm not saying for sure that we're gonna go all the way out until August of 2023, but that's just what this dubious speculation would suggest. Okay, so going back to this chart, 10 trillion is where I ultimately see this asset class going over the next couple of years. Okay, I mean, I, I we're now in 2022. Um, there is definitely a chance we could hit a market cycle peak in 2022. Of course, this is assuming that 2021 was not the market cycle top, which is a possibility, okay? I mean, I know people don't like to hear that, and I don't think that it is the market cycle top, but it is a possibility, right? There's all sorts of possibilities. It's always possible that 64K had, could have been the top for Bitcoin back in April, but it wasn't, right? We then went to 69K. So I don't think 69K is the top for this cycle, but it's always a possibility. 
So I do think the entire asset class is trending to $10 trillion this market cycle. Okay, $10 trillion. A modest $10 trillion. Okay, so I do think it's going to go to $10 trillion. But there was no reason it had to make it there in 2021. And realistically, the earliest we could get there is probably Q3 of 2022. Realistically, the earliest we could get to $10 trillion. Maybe late Q2. Okay, so maybe late Q2 we could get there. Realistically, the earliest would be, you know, would be way out here in uh, later 2022. And then certainly in, in 2023, it, be, it certainly becomes a more likely possibility. You should note that if this is the market cycle top and we come back down to the bottom here, then it would then the undervaluation could, you know, could take us all the way back to uh, a market capitalization, of the ent entire asset class of approximately one trillion. So if you're if you're thinking about okay, well, what is your theoretical downside risk here? We know the asset class is currently at 2.2 trillion. If it were to go back down to the green line, which has historically been pretty good at marking, um, you know, theoretical bottoms, then you know you could argue that the the bottom or thereabouts would probably be around one trillion, which would basically mean, you know, we would still have 50% to drop. Um, so that, that would sort of be if the bears are right. I, I, I still think that the market looks relatively healthy as we head into 2022. I'm even maybe going into 2023. And I would argue that the entire asset class is trending to $10 trillion plus or minus a few trillion, right? Plus or minus a few trillion. And as we go to sleep at night, we cannot help but wonder what's a few trillion dollars among friends. If you guys like the content, make sure you subscribe to the channel, give the video a thumbs up. I'll see you guys next time.